In this presentation, we will understand special program number 8, Armstrong number. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The topic of this presentation is special program, check the Armstrong number. So, let's get started with this topic and let's understand the problem statement now. Write a program to check whether a given three digit number is an Armstrong number or not. We need to now write a program to check whether a given three digit number entered by the user is an Armstrong number or not. Before writing the program for the same, first we need to understand the meaning of Armstrong number. So let's look at the definition of Armstrong number, which makes us clear what is an Armstrong number. So let's now look at the definition of the Armstrong number. An n digit Armstrong number is a special number which is equal to the sum of its own digits, each raised to the power of n. So, an n digit Armstrong number is a special number which is equal to the sum of its own digits and that too, each raised to the power of n. So, if we have this number a, b, c, d and so on and if we want to say this, that this is an Armstrong number, then this must be equal to a to the power n plus b to the power n plus c to the power n plus d to the power n and so on. So, in this way we can say that this number is an Armstrong number. So, an n digit Armstrong number is a special number which is equal to the sum of its own digits, each raised to the power n. Now, I hope it is clear what is an n digit Armstrong number. Let's now understand the definition of a three digit Armstrong number because eventually we want to write the program to check whether a given three digit number is an Armstrong number or not. So, let's look at the definition of a three digit Armstrong number. A three digit Armstrong number is a special number which is equal to the sum of its own digits, each raised to the power of three. In place of n, now we have 3. So, we are looking at the definition of a 3 digit Armstrong number. Now, let's look at the example for the same. 153 is an Armstrong number because it is equal to 1 to the power 3 plus 5 to the power 3 plus 3 to the power 3. And if we calculate this, we will get 153 only. This means that 153 is an Armstrong number. I hope now the concept of Armstrong number is completely clear. This means that we are now ready to write the program to check whether a given three digit number is an Armstrong number or not. For this purpose, first we need to take the user input. This means we need a three digit number from the user. So, let's write the first statement of our program, which is num equal to int input enter a three digit number. Here we are using input method to ask the user to enter a three digit number. Here we are passing this string enter a three digit number and this colon which will eventually get printed on the screen and this gives the prompt to the user. User will enter the three digit number and we will provide that to the num variable. But before providing that value to the num variable, we first need to provide that value to the int method int method will eventually convert the string representation of the input received from the user to integer. Finally, we'll make num variable point to that integer value. I hope this step is clear. Now, what is the next step? We need this variable sum and we need to initialize it to zero because we eventually need to calculate the sum of all digits raised to the power n. After the calculation, we will check whether num is equal to sum or not. If num is equal to sum, then we know that the number is the Armstrong number. The number entered by the user is an Armstrong number. We'll be sure about this. Now, the main question is, what is the logic that allows us to check whether the given number is an Armstrong number? How do we write the program for the same? In order to write the program, the logic is pretty simple. We need a loop for this purpose. We can take while loop and in each iteration of the while loop, we will extract each digit of the number entered by the user. So, let's say if user enters 153, 
Then in each iteration, we will extract each digit of the number 153. In the first iteration, we will extract digit 3, which is the last digit of 153. And we can extract that digit using the mod operation. We already learned this in our previous presentations, that if we calculate mod 10 of a number, then we will get the last digit of that number. So with mod 10 operation, we would be able to obtain the last digit of 153. After obtaining the last digit, we will take the power of 3 of that digit and we will add that to the sum variable. After calculating the sum, we will divide the number by 10. This will give us the quotient and eventually we will store that quotient somewhere so that in the next iteration, we will perform the operations with that quotient only. Because if we divide the number by 10, we would be able to eliminate the last digit of the number. In our example, from 153, 3 will be removed, we would be left with 15. So the next time when we will perform the operations, that is mod 10 and so on, we would be able to obtain 5, which is the second last digit of the number. In this way, we will extract each digit of the number entered by the user. For this purpose, we need while loop. So let's write the while loop. But before that, we need to understand this, that we should not perform operations on this num variable itself. Instead, we will take a temporary variable and perform operations on it. Now, why is that needed? Understand this, that after performing the operations, we'll get the sum in the sum variable, the final sum. Then we need to check whether num is equal to sum or not. If we will perform all operations on the num variable, then eventually num will become zero and we don't want that. We want to retain the number entered by the user. Hence, we need a temporary variable and we will perform operations on that temporary variable only. So I hope this idea is clear. So now let's create the temporary variable and let's make it point to the value which is the value of the num variable. Now after this, we need to write the while statement. This is how our while statement looks like, while temp greater than zero. We need to perform operations on the temp variable, not on the num variable. Here we are checking this, is temp greater than zero? If it is greater than zero, we will continue. If it becomes equal to zero, then we know that we have exhausted all digits of the number which is entered by the user. This means that we now need to stop the while loop. Hence, this condition checking is needed. So here we are checking this condition is temp greater than zero. If it is the case, we will continue. And now we need to extract the last digit of the number, right? So for this purpose, we need this statement, digit equal to temp mod 10. Here we are performing mod 10 operation, which allows us to get the last digit of the number and eventually we'll make digit variable point to that value. After this step, what is the next step? We need to calculate the power of 3 of this digit and we need to add that to the sum variable. So this is the line we need, sum plus equal to digit to the power 3. Here we are calculating power of 3 of digit and finally we are adding this result to the sum variable. Now after this step, we need to perform this step that is temp equal to temp divide by 10. We need this step so that in the next iteration, we'll perform this operation that is temp mod 10 on two digits and not on the original number. So if the original number is 153, then in the second iteration, we want to perform this operation on 15 and not on 153. I hope this idea is completely clear. After this while loop, we need to check if num is equal to sum or not. We know that after this while loop, our sum variable will hold the final sum. Therefore, we are ready to check this if num is equal to sum. If num is equal to sum, then we know that the number entered by the user is an Armstrong number. So we'll print this message on the screen. Num is an Armstrong number. Here we are using this f string to embed this variable in this string itself. If num is not equal to sum, then we know that we need to print num is not an Armstrong number. I hope the logic of this program is clear. 
Now let's execute this program line by line and let's check the output on the screen. Let's check whether we are getting the correct output or not. Let's first ask the user to enter a three digit number. So here we'll get this prompt enter a three digit number. Let's say the user has entered 153. We know that 153 is an Armstrong number, but now we need to check this programmatically whether this number is an Armstrong number or not. Now we know that num variable must point to this value. So here num variable is pointing to this object with value 153. After this, the next step is to initialize sum to zero. So now sum is pointing to this object with value zero. Now what is the next step? We need to initialize temp also. Temp must be equal to num. This means that temp variable must point to this object with value 153. Now what is the next step? We need to execute this while statement while temp greater than zero. This means that now we need to check this condition is temp greater than zero. We can observe this that temp is 153 and 153 is greater than zero. Therefore, we can continue and execute this statement. Digit equal to temp mod 10. First, we need to calculate temp mod 10. Now, what is temp mod 10? Temp mod 10 must be equal to 3. We will extract this digit from this number. Now, here, this digit variable must point to this object with value 3. Now, what is the next step? The next step is to execute this line sum plus equal to digit to the power 3. First, we need to calculate digit to the power 3 before calculating the sum. Digit to the power 3 will give us 27 because 3 to the power 3 is 27. Therefore, sum must be equal to 27. Now, after this, we need to calculate this temp equal to temp divide by 10. This means now we need to divide this number by 10. This will give us 15 and eventually this value will be replaced by 15. That's what we are doing here. Now, what is the next step? We need to execute this statement once again. This time also temp is greater than zero. Therefore, now we need to execute this statement. Let's calculate temp mod 10 now. What is temp mod 10? 15 mod 10 is 5. This means that now digit variable must point to this object with value 5. Now, what is the next step? We need to calculate this. First, we need to calculate digit to the power 3. What is 5 to the power 3? 5 to the power 3 is 125. Therefore, now we will get 125 here. And now we need to calculate sum plus equal to 125. This means now we need to add 125 to 27. We will get 152 here. Because 125 plus 27 is equal to 152. So eventually some variable is now pointing to this object with value 152. Now what is the next step? We need to calculate temp equal to temp divide by 10. So now we need to divide this number by 10. 15 divided by 10 is equal to 1. And eventually, we want that temp variable must point to this object with value 1. The next step is to check this condition once again. Temp greater than 0. Is temp greater than 0? Temp is still greater than 0. Therefore, we will continue and calculate temp mod 10. What is temp mod 10 this time? Temp mod 10 must be 1 this time because 1 mod 10 is equal to 1. The remainder that we will obtain after dividing this number by 10 is equal to 1. Therefore, digit variable now must point to this object with value 1. After this, we need to execute this statement sum plus equal to digit to the power 3. Now, what is digit to the power 3 this time? We'll get 1 only because 1 to the power 3 is 1. And now we need to add this value to this value. We'll get 153. So eventually, some variable must point to this object with value 153. After this step, we need to calculate this, that is temp equal to temp divide by 10. This time we will get 0 here because if we divide 1 by 10, then it will give us the quotient which is equal to 0. Therefore, we will get 0 here. Now after this, if we check this condition, we will get false here. And this means that now we are done with this while loop. Now we can observe this, that num is equal to sum. Therefore, this condition is true 
and hence we need to execute this print statement which means that eventually we will get this output 153 is an armstrong number i hope this is clear in this way we will get this output on the screen we are getting this output because 153 is an armstrong number as we have already seen this this means that we are done with this program and i hope it is clear how this program works now let's execute this program in visual studio code and let's verify the result that we are getting here i have opened the python work folder and within this folder i have created this file armstrong number 3.py this is the file that i have created and within this file i have written the same code which we have seen in the presentation now let's execute this code for this purpose first we need to open the terminal and now we are ready to type this command python then white space then the name of this file followed by .py extension so now let's type this let's hit enter let's enter 153 let's hit enter again we are getting this output 153 is an armstrong number which is correct now let's execute this once again this time let's enter 456 which is not an armstrong number let's hit enter we are getting this output 456 is not an armstrong number so with this we have verified our results and this means that our code is working correctly now let's get back to our presentation now we have verified this program and we know that this program is working correctly and we have understood how to write the program to check whether a given three digit number is an armstrong number or not now i would encourage you to write the program to check whether a given n digit number is an armstrong number or not so with this we are done with this topic and this means that we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one